Good morning. Our opening hymn for today is number 66, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of praise is hymn number 437, Tell Out My Soul the Greatness of the Lord. pray. God of peace, you give us this season of Advent to help us learn how to watch for Jesus. Open our eyes and help us to be alert so we will be able to recognize the Lord when he comes again. The collect for the today is printed in your leaflet. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reader for today is Leon Spencer. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, 
Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, your house and your kingdom shall be made forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 15 is the appointed canticle for today and is printed in the online bulletin. We will pray the canticle together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sequence hymn for today is number 265. We will sing the first verse before the gospel and the second ver or the third verse following the gospel. Drifted 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God, and now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Holy wisdom, holy word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we hear the story of the Annunciation. The announcement from the angel Gabriel to Mary that she had been chosen to be the mother of Jesus. How we see her is essential to how we understand the Incarnation. If we try to portray her only as the, the Queen of Heaven or the mother of God, we miss out on appreciating her humanity. We diminish her humanness. We remove the flesh from the word and we risk losing Jesus, the human part of Jesus Christ. Author Frederick Buchner imag imagines the Annunciation this way. The angel Gabriel saw Mary as hardly old enough to have a child, let alone this child, but he had been entrusted to give her a message, and he delivers. He tells her the child's name, who, who the child would become, and something about the mystery that's about to happen to her. Don't be afraid, Mary, he says to her. But he speaks those words, and he hopes that she won't notice that beneath those great golden wings, he himself is trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hangs on the response of one young woman. I think it's important to point out that Gabriel, in his infinite wisdom, left some important parts out. I can't help but think that Mary was filled with questions when he left. 
So does Joseph stick around for this whole thing? Will my parents understand this? Will my friends believe this or laugh and poke fun at me? Will there be any pain in this whole thing? Who will be there to help me? So this child will be the king of Israel. But what about me? What does my future hold? This story is so much harder to believe than if it consisted only of a crowned queen and hearts and flowers and music from an angelic choir. This young woman, Mary, the Theotokos, God-bearer, sings, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This is not the everyday song of a young woman. Confident in the knowledge that her husband will love her all the more for the child that she's about to bear. Rather, this is the incredible joy of one walking the path of holy insecurity. On the brink of extremity in the human condition. And yet, she accepts the fact that she is the chosen one of God. Perhaps today is a good day to meet Mary again for the first time. Let's not take away the rigors of her condition. Most certainly, she does not simply sail through nine months of pregnancy without experiencing morning sickness and varicose veins and hemorrhoids and hormonal headaches and sheer exhaustion. These physical realities give power to her witness. Without the acknowledgement of Mary's humanity, the incarnation, God becoming humankind, becomes magic, not miracle. Mary pays dearly for her anointing as the favored one. She's the first to suffer for the sake of Jesus. Author Martin Buber suggests that Mary lives life daily in this holy insecurity. A daily walk of faith in which you do not know even the next step let alone what the end product will be. But you keep putting one foot in front of the other anyway. Holy insecurity. When I read that, it resonated with me so stronger, so strongly. A daily walk in which you do not even know where the next step will be. But you pick up the foot and somehow, through faith, it lands. Sometimes right and sometimes wrong, but you redirect your focus because the next foot is coming. This is the condition we're living in right now with COVID. How many here can relate to this feeling of holy insecurity? What we feel is a normal response to a totally abnormal situation. I'm sure many of you have heard my Mary prayer. Hal Mary full of grace, God be with me in this place. None of the Gospels suggest that Jesus speaks some semblance of loving words to Mary. Perhaps he felt he couldn't belong to anyone, but rather belong to everyone equally. Everyone is his family, brothers and sisters. There is no place in Scripture where Jesus offers Mary anything more than he offers everyone else further witness to Mary's incredible faith. Mary and her faith offer us a model of what happens in our midst during the Eucharist. Just as the power of the Holy Spirit overshadows Mary to give birth to Jesus, the Holy Spirit consecrates the bread and the wine to be the real presence of Christ for each one of us, the divine, entering into human life. Just as Mary receives this anointing by faith with thanksgiving, in the same way, we also receive the gifts of God as the people of God. And just as Mary proves to be the meeting place between God and humanity at a specific point in time, the Eucharist serves as our point in time, where the incarnate word, the divine, meets each of us in humankind. 
On this fourth Sunday in Advent, let's take this example from Mary and go forth into the world rejoicing. And regardless of our current situation, our place of holy insecurity, may we rejoice just as Mary does in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with an affirmation of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found printed in your leaflet. Leon will lead us. God of wisdom, give to your people knowledge of your truth and an awareness of your presence. Inspire clergy, worship leaders, and musicians to an ever-deepening sense of praise. Come, O come, Emmanuel. God of creation, hold the cosmos and all creation in your care. Grant to the earth both light and darkness, warmth and cold, life and death. Inspire and compel us to care for the earth as your precious gift. Come, O come, Emmanuel. King of all nations, bring peace and justice to the nations of the world. Guide the leaders of all nations in the way of justice and truth. Raise up the poor, the needy, the suffering, victims of war and violence, and those who are persecuted. Come, O come, Emmanuel. God of David, look from your throne upon all who are in need. Bind the broken and those who are brokenhearted. Free those who are imprisoned by anxiety, depression, addiction, pain, and other disease, especially Richard Booker, Jonathan Dash, Jim Finnegan, Dottie Holwager, Ann Kirk, Dick Kirk, Shirley Lester, Ellie Lewis, Marion Morton, Tori Robinson, Sarah Schwartz, Sue Scott, Jared Shea, Peggy Smith, Wilson and Joan Summers, Mary Jo Tucker, Sally Wolf. Bring to them healing and wholeness of life. Come, O come, Emmanuel. God of Jesse, nurture our community. 
Give us joy in one another and make us servants of all those in need. Be with all who travel this holiday season and bless our holy day celebrations with your spirit. Come, O come, Emmanuel. O God, day spring from on high, we remember all who have died, remembering especially Nancy Camp, George Lewis, and Louise Cerny, and now live in your light. Gather us to yourself and teach us to sing your praises in this life and the life to come. Please offer your own prayers and petitions, silently or aloud. Please join me in the concluding collect. God of peace, as we enter this season of expectant waiting, direct us to see beyond human distractions and help us prepare our hearts for Emmanuel, God with us. We ask this through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn for today is number 269, Ye Who Claim the Faith of Jesus. I invite you all to join with us in this spiritual communion today. We will be consecrating the bread for our service outside on Sunday. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere 
to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through them, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, that by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Our 
Our communion hymn is Ave Maria, sung by Charlotte Paulson. thanksgiving for our many blessings, for the beautiful rendition of Ave Maria. Thank you, Charlotte. We will pray the post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love. Make haste to be kind. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 56, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
A special thank you to Charlotte Paulson, our singer, to Wilson Summers, our pianist, to Jay Hummel, our IT person, and to Leon Spencer, our reader. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.